At some point in the course of building your aircraft, of course, you're going to find it necessary to hook the wing up to the fuselage, and of course you want to make sure that that uh, connection is accurate, otherwise you uh, have all sorts of difficulties getting the wing attached to the fuselage. Now in the cor in the, uh, for the uh, Zenith 650, uh, you build what's called a wing spar jig. Now, I don't know, I guess because that Zenith is, uh, at least for their kits, they have everything CNC cut and drilled, and uh, they haven't, I guess, found it necessary to include the plans for the uh, wing spar jig uh, in their normal plans anymore, uh, or really provide much guidance on the construction of one, and I haven't seen anything on YouTube. Uh, describing this, so I figured I would do a quick video just showing this, uh, showing the wing spar jig. This is for a, a Zenith 650 build, and uh, just uh, hopefully give someone else that's in the same position that in, as me uh, maybe a little bit more guidance on on what this should look like and uh, and some ideas on how to construct it. So the first thing I'll show here is uh, just on the iPad here is uh, just a small shot of plans and again these are not included in the uh, uh, in the, the normal Zenith 650B plans uh, but if you do email Zenith uh, and you ask for uh, for a 6B for uh, plan sheet 6B1 for the 601XL they will supply you with the plans now, of course, one thing to keep in mind is that this is a different, uh, of course, a different design on the 650. So you can't necessarily just, you know, trust what's here. And part of the process that I went through was carefully measuring the setup for the uh, or the the dimensions uh, of the of the uh, spar. And the and the end of the wing. In fact, I'll go ahead and just move over here real quick, just to provide a quick shot of the of what the end of the wing looks like, and essentially what you're trying to accomplish. I mean, essentially, the wing spar jig acts as a stand-in for the for the end of the wing. So. When you're setting, when you're getting everything set up, of course you'll have the uh, uh, you'll have a, a small piece that covers basically this area that will act as a stand-in for this. And in addition, in addition, you'll have another uh, smaller piece that will act as a stand-in for uh, for the for the root of the main rib. So we'll go back over to where I've got the pieces laid out. And we'll get this out of the way. Now the main part of the, the uh, of course the, the main part of the of the of the wing jig is a piece of uh, 090 uh, sheet aluminum, and essentially the dimensions are given in the plans. Now, the way that I had uh, constructed this actually is I didn't build this directly. Instead, I made a template out of out of 025. And what this allowed me to do is I could fine-tune the dimensions of this template to exactly match the root of my wing. And then once I had that figured out, uh, then I could go ahead and use my more expensive 090 aluminum. Now one thing I do want to, a couple of things I do want to point out here. First off, I had, ex I had, uh, had gotten a little confused by the drawings and I put these notches in here. And the notches on the back side are not necessary. Now, of course, you will need the notches on the front because, especially if you want to do a do a, a, a test fit up uh, inside the uh, inside the the first uh, 
rib on the wing, then you'll have to cut out some notches to, to get that to fit in there properly and just make sure everything lines up. A couple of other things to keep in mind. This right here, the top edge, that's going to be your zero reference. So whenever you're making any measurements uh, on the plans, everything's going to be basically your zero, zero datum is going to be this be in this area where this corner was cut off. And then another thing you're going to want to have, this is basically a reference line that matches the reference line of the, uh, of the, the wing ribs as given in the, in the Zenith plans. And what I did in my case, of course, I had this marked, and then also on the main spar itself, which I've got a similar mark here, I did a similar line here, and to know that I had everything lined up properly, I would make sure, I would make sure that, let's see, make sure I've got my front and my back straight here. But I would make sure that the that this line here lines up with the line that's uh, that's drawn on the web. And of course, I did that drawing here. But I also did I marked a similar reference line on the uh, on the main spar itself. And that way, I could be sure that I'm getting a, a correct up down alignment alignment. And similarly, there is a there is a uh, uh, a similar reference line drawn for the the stand in of the of the of the rear spar. Set aside. And of course this is the the, the, the part that acts as the stand-in for the for the main spar. Uh, this is an eighth inch by I think one inch by uh, inch and a half aluminum. This was actually a, uh, a piece that was originally meant for the for use on the main spar, but I'd made an error in drilling my holes, so I had an opportunity to repurpose that as the uh, as the as the bracket to to hold the to hold the 090 web. And of course, the fabrication will be exactly the same as what you've uh, got on the uh, on the main spar. So I mean, the dimensions match exactly. This is the part here that would actually go would fit into the center spar. Now I haven't drilled my holes yet. Uh, I also opted not to, at this point anyway, opted not to uh, to to drill the the uh, the slight angle that is on the main spar. I'm not sure if that's something I really need to worry about uh, for this. If it turns out to be necessary, then I'll then I'll notch in the the, the appropriate uh, relief right there. And then for stiffening the main web, because I mean this is 090 aluminum. Over a fairly long distance, then you're going to want to have a stiffener on there. Uh, in my case, I sort of repurposed some pieces that I had made mistakes on. This actually came off the uh, uh, off the, the the main stiffener for the firewall. I'd made some mistakes. Actually, made the mistake twice. So actually, I uh, I had some some ready-made pieces to to go ahead and use. And of course, those are just uh, click odium. And then out of another piece of 090 aluminum is the bracket that is used to uh, used to, to support the support the the main the support the the rear channel piece and this is also made out of uh, 090 aluminum that is specified in the plans so that pretty much covers uh, all the basic pieces now I'll just go ahead and I'll swing the camera over here and I'll show the other one that's been fully completed to give you an idea of what it looks like. Okay, so this is a view of the, uh, of the uh, assembled one. This is the one that I, I don't know, goes to, it's the, I guess, the right-hand side. So it corresponds to the, to the right-hand wing. And I have found it pretty convenient in the course of building this. You've got a set of soft jaws for your vise. Everything mounts up very nicely here. Uh, right now, everything's clicko together. It's pretty much to the point of being ready to rivet together. So I'll go ahead and take this and turn it around. So you can see what the back side looks like and how everything is assembled together. Probably get the camera recentered. But again, uh, you know, this is where the, uh, of 
of course this channel was. Uh, one thing you'll definitely want to do and uh, that I made mistakes on a couple of times, be sure to clearly label top, bottom, front, back, outside, and inside because uh, I, in the course of, of constructing this, managed to get things uh, backwards once and, and had to, to remake some parts. So definitely make sure you get all your orientations clearly marked. Um, but I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, like I said, there just isn't, uh, there isn't a whole lot of information out there that I could see on, on the fabrication of this. So hopefully uh, this little video will be useful to another, uh, another 650 builder or, uh, or other plans builder. And if you've got any questions, just feel free to uh, make a comment.